Hi there, this is Anne with another Stir Crazy member challenge from Visions Art Museum. And this activity will be weaving leaves for fall. I'll be making a table, just a really simple table topper. After we weave it, I'll show you how to paint it. It's really simple, it takes very little paint. The things that you'll need for this project are the PDF and it has three leaves on it, but you really only need one. I'm gonna be using a piece of black. This needs to be cotton fabric so that it can be torn. I'm using a piece of black for my background and I'm just using it raw edged and torn. I won't be um, finishing this in any fancy way. For each leaf, you'll need a seven inch square of white cotton fabric. From the same fabric, either cut more squares and tear them into quarter or three-eighths inch wide pieces, or tear long strips and cut into seven inch pieces. Whether from the square or the long strips, you'll need 13 weft pieces, give or take. You'll need some good paper scissors, fabric scissors, um, a chalk pencil, although on the black, if your regular pencil will show on the black, then you can use that. Also, um, if I didn't say painter's tape or, or masking tape, some kind of tape that can easily come off of the fabric. And a piece of foil, this is about a seven and a half inch square. And if you're not gonna use a, a rotary cutter and a ruler and a mat, that's what you would, what I'm gonna be using, you could use, you can use a regular ruler, a pencil, and um, fabric scissors. And I'll talk about the paint when we get to that step. This has a finished edge. I don't want to go there, but I'm going to come up here and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch. And some directions when you tear it, it frays more or it curls, depending on how thick your, how wide your um, tear is. But this one wasn't too bad. I'm going to just sort of pull those frays off. I don't care if it's if some of those are left. I like the look of that. If this curl too much, which sometimes they do, I would just take it to the iron ironing board and press it flat. And then that'll be ready for weaving. So to begin with the PDF, I do cut out all three leaves. You can make as many as you want or as few as you want. The reason I cut them all out, even though I'm only going to be using one to trace an outline, I cut them all out because I want to lay them out and see the arrangement I want to make. Let me move these. And that helps me really visualize it. So when I decide how, where I want them, I'm going to turn this over because I've already done that step. Everything shows on this black fabric. A lint brush is a good idea. So I've laid them down on my on my um, black fabric, and I've just marked around each of the leaves. So I'm just focusing on one in this tutorial, and then you will do that same step for as many as you would like. Then to begin with, I'm going to, after I've got them drawn on here, and this is the what would be the back of the fabric. This fabric doesn't really have a front or back when it gets right down to it for these this project anyway. But I will be drawing them on the back side, and you'll see why later. And I take some very sharp scissors. You can cut in the middle, but I kind of want to keep that black leaf hole for some other project maybe. So I'll cut, just cut on the line. And all I'm going to do is cut around and cut the leaf out. You could do these on an individual square and then sew the squares together. So I'll go ahead and cut this out. Something to think about is that when we're cutting this out, we want this to be intact 
We're not too worried about cutting into the leaf unless you're trying to save it like I think I am. So you want to not cut off into the background. That's more important than if you hack into the leaf. Okay, and then I have a hole where my leaf is going to go. And I would cut all of those out and do it, just do that step for all of them. But we're just going to work on one today. So then the next thing we're going to do is set that aside for a second and get out your square of fabric. And if you're using a pencil and regular ruler and scissors, you will mark a line. This is just approximate about uh, three quarters of an inch up from the edge here and about three quarters of an inch from the outside edge. An inch, three quarter, it's close enough. And then I'm gonna just draw a line and that's the line I'm gonna cut on. Then I'm going to turn it this way because I'm right-handed. I'm going to put the ruler down. Sorry about the glare here, reflection and go about a quarter of an inch, put that pencil line on about a quarter of an inch of my ruler and I'm going to draw another line. And just try to keep them about even here, it'll just make it easier later on. So that's what I do if I'm using a pencil and a scissors. Now I'm going to just show you the way I would do it. You can still draw the lines if that helps with a regular rotary cutter and ruler on a mat, a cutting mat. I'm going to just do it that way and I will use that cut as my guide. Pencil line is a little easier to see and I will just continue cutting every quarter or three-eighths of an inch. I like them narrower usually and I will end up with this. So you see all my little and that's going to be my my warp, so it's going up and down. Now I'll bring back my leaf fabric, I mean my background fabric, and sort of find the center of this. It's not that particular. And I want to put my leaf on there. Let me get a little closer. So what I have found is that if you set your your leaf on those split fabric so that the point, the tip, and the end of the stem are sort of centered on one of the strips, the closest to the center strip. And you can kind of look under and see, well, where am I? And I could move over one, but I'm not going to. As long as I see that every, every piece of this leaf has a slit strip there, then that's going to be fine but I have this wrong. So we're gonna, this is something that's easy to do. We're gonna put it this way and lay it on top so that you could see what I was talking about. And now I'll just lay it. I'm gonna scoot it over one. Then that's, the leaf is centered within my weave. Mm, might pull it up a teeny bit. And now I'm gonna take my tape and I'm just going to put these on here. I don't want them to be anywhere near the outline of that of the leaf because that'll get in the way of my stitching. Now, we're going to hang on to that for a second. We're going to grab our piece of foil so we're going to use the foil for our shuttle and we're going to fold it into a triangle and I have this, this bit here I'm going to cut off just because it's kind of in the way. And I'm starting on the opposite of the fold end and I'm just going to fold this in about quarter inch this is a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Quarter inch folds and press them really tight. 
and try and keep them even and just fold it down and just continue on with that fold and when it's all folded I'll take the end and either pinch pinch a little point or you can cut it but if you cut it it tends to leave the layers and it's easier to use if it's not cut so that's on one end and then the other end I cut straight if it's ragged I'm going to have take a little piece of tape and lay it on the end opposite of the pointy end and just if there's, it's long just fold that over so that it's on there nice and snug then I'm going to take one of my strips and I'm going to stick the tape onto the end. You can do this after you weave it through. And I want to remember that I want the tail, the beginning and the end tail, to be up here. And you might think, well, I could cut little short strips, and you could, but then you'll have to tape all over the place, and when you sew, that tape will get in the way. So I just go ahead and use about the same length for every one. So I'm going to start around the top of the leaf, and I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to go under my first one. and send my shuttle <laughs> through each one. We're just gonna pull that across and pull it up, pop that off. Stick another piece of our, our torn strips on. I'm going to add some tips here. You should only have about 13 or 14 slices in your square. And just make sure that your leaf is covered by the warp pieces. Also, I tear down the tape to make it narrower, and that was a bad idea, so don't do that. But I'm going to show you a new piece now that has wider tape. I've taped all around the weave, all around the square, and I'm going to start at the top and just go in and out, in and out, and then I'll move down the whole piece with my weft pieces, the torn pieces. Then when I'm finished weaving all of those pieces, I'm going to take the same tape and tape only the sides going out as far as I can away from the leaf. When I have my weave all finished, I'll turn it over, make sure none of the little edges of the black are stuck under the weave. Sometimes that happens. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. And I'm just going to stitch pretty close to the edge. It's a little bit slow going, but just be patient with yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. Black on black hardly shows. I'm not going to show you all the stitching because it is time consuming. So I'm back from the machine, and it's okay, to, in my opinion, if it's fraying. I don't mind. I like that. And then on the back, there's my stitching. And at this point, I'm going to remove my tape. And you can see that there was a little more, like I probably didn't need to make this extra cut. I could have made it a little shorter. That's just all kind of trial and error. It depends on how, how uh, big your, wide your strips are. And those are just all things that make the difference. That and the size of your square, the size of your leaf. So, I'm going to take my scissors, really sharp scissors, and be kind of careful I don't cut into the back fabric, and I'm going to just trim this away.
So now the next step will be to paint it. We're going to paint it wet. This is a different leaf, but this is an example. And if you're not into doing the painting, you can use commercial fabrics. You can cut just like we did the beginning up and down and then tear the other pieces that go across. You could cut them all and it's pretty even though it's a commercial fabric. So to begin with, and you want all your leaves woven at once so that you can do all the painting at one time. Be sure you're working on, an, on a surface that can get wet. You don't want to damage anything or stain anything. And I will be using Jacquard textile color. I love this textile color uh, paint. Um, and I'm going to be using a yellow, an apple green, and an orange. On my first one I used red and just mixed it with the yellow and that works just fine also. I have a little mister of water and I'll be needing that and maybe extra water and I have a little palette here. It takes just a tiniest bit of paint I also have some, I'm just using little craft, craft sticks to take the paint out and put it into the my little palette, which is just a lid. And you want to have some paper towel or something to wipe up any little messes. The, most of this paint doesn't show really on the black, so you don't need to worry, be worried about the black part. I have three brushes. These are just sort of, they're round pointed brushes. They're not so pointed, some of them, but they're just sort of soppy mop brushes that can take up the water. I'm going to take my paints. And put the tiniest bit on my little palette, just the tiniest bit. You can use any colors you want, of course. Maybe look up some fall leaves. Now, let me scoot over a little bit so you can see my paint. There we go. I'm going to take my spray my mist bottle and I'm going to mist that mist your weave get it nice and damp not dripping just damp if your fabric's a little thick it might take a little bit more and I'm going to get my paintbrushes wet And I don't have to miss the paint, but I just decided to do that. And I think I'm going to rotate this so I have it straight so I can see it a little bit better. And then you just begin, and I would normally take the sticks out of this little palette, but they're there, so I'm just going to leave them. And I'm going to lay down some paint, and I can tell my my. I'm not misting it, missed it enough. I want that paint to move. I have too much on my brush. Like I said, it takes such a teeny, teeny amount. Just a very, very small amount. And if it doesn't look like it's moving, hit it with some more water because we really want it to, we really want it to move. can't really go wrong just lay down the paint and I'm going to get into some other color and if you're worried about your paints blending together on your palette you might get a little bit bigger palette and I'm just gonna throw in some yellow here let it blend with the orange bit of green in
making a little mud with that, but that's okay with me. Oh, I like that. So n now, I would move on to my other leaves and do them all since I have my paint out. And you can see it was hardly any paint at all. You want to let this dry. If you move it and it touches itself, it can, it can transfer the, the paint. So just be aware of that. And my leaves are all finished. After they dried, I dried mine outside. You could iron them or not. It makes the weave a little more flat to iron them, but I'm okay with that. And I have it just on this torn piece of fabric for a table topper. topper. You could make several on the length and make it a table runner. It could be, they could be made on to a pillow. This could be quilted. I may still sandwich and quilt this. And when they're held up to the light, they look like stained glass. I hope you'll weave your own leaves. And if you do, take a photo and post it on Facebook and Instagram using hashtag stircrazyvam and hashtag VAM weaving leaves. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. And tap the bell so you get notifications for new videos. This has been Ann. Thanks a lot for watching.